Welcome! Guess whose birthday it is? The Sound Booth birthday stream. It is the last one of the day. Happy birthday! That we did in conjunction with Lit RPG Legion! <laughs> oh wow, I'm here. getting some hey, echo! You these guys like my, my mask, this is Halloween. And I wear a fake face. No one can tell who I am. Can you guess? People guess? I don't think anybody can see you through the logo. Oh, oh. It, I can I see him. My mask upside down. Ah, uh, hi. Oh, I can <laughs> see him, all right. He's in the upper middle for me. Everyone, <laughs> welcome <laughs> our guest. We have to my left, Mark Harris. He is saying he is some writer words. of Seance High Falls, and he is playing main character. Very good voice act as well as writing. How are you doing today, Mark Harris? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm not exactly sure who I'm talking to, but uh, but I like it. Uh, I think uh, your loopback is I, on, I, buddy. I will do mad. I will do magic face reveal after <laughs> I introduce everyone because I am getting hot. It is. It's sweaty in here. By it's way, getting hot in here. So <laughs> take <laughs> off all your masks. Ooh, my and I thought. I thought yeah, I was wearing the hottest outfit with my 70s uh, swinger outfit that I wear for Halloween. I think your outfit goes well with this mask. <laughs> I wish I had... This okay. is a disaster. Below, below Mark Harris, we have Sarah King. Very, hello. very good sci-fi writer. Please say hello to everyone. Sarah, tell us how you are doing. Hello. Wait, what was the last thing you said? How are you doing, Sarah? Um, pretty good. <laughs> Fantastic. That's it. And also another guest from some of Sarah's writings that we that we publish. Henry Kramer, legendary narrator. Thank you for coming, Mr. Pirate. It's, it's, it's good to be here. Excellent accent. Outrageous. And of course, my brother here. Mr. Dork Zuckerberg, and I... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I am, of course, Mark Zuckerberg. How oh is everyone God. doing today? Oh my God. <laughs> he committed to the bits, I... That is, that is a man of devotion and integrity right there. Indeed, right, yes. So wait, 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 right, right there. There we go. Oh, there we so go. Good. So good. So good to be out of there. It's very hard to. At least mask can fit my nose, you know. Uh, but wow. uh, thank everybody for come to Sandbu Theatre Live, uh, our birthday party. Yes, yes. So. I do love me a good party. Thank you very much, Goddess Zira. Says my face is beautiful. I know this. I know this, um, but you know, I sometimes like to surprise people. Uh, they don't know this is what I look like. Um, it's it's fun to see their face. They're like, oh my goodness, are you model? Are you? A... Do we really need to hear any more about Facebook, Mark? <sighs> okay, we won't. We won't talk about my Facebook. I think that conversation be a bit too much meta. This is like yes. really, really bad. Like with with voice actors trying to like. Like, figure out who's who. This is freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not a voice actor. Oh, I am yes, a vampire. He gets, he gets very offended when you say he's acting. Um, oh. Oh, it's like I, a, I, what, how you call them, the LARP? The LARP man? No. He does yeah, the I LARPing. Like, and, uh, I like you know, your he gets outdoors into character and vampire goes, book. Mm, mm. Oh, okay. yes. I am very, very excited to talk called... about cold vampire Vamp book vampire book Vamp people write <laughs> books about vampires now like think about the, how the culture has has evolved and we are accepted we are accepted uh, now there's it's even tv wonderful. shows about it i know i know i heard about uh, a boofy um boof <laughs> yeah, boofy. the boofy but uh, yes. but i it was weird that they focused on the villain but i it's i mean you know strange. sometimes shows are the villain ladies not very you nice know, she, this she was... michelle geller lady <laughs> um 
But you know, uh, it, 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 it takes progress. You know, they need a uh, white <laughs> ma female main character first, you know, uh, to make sure vampires, you know, can get integrated into, into culture a bit better, have white face instead of, you know, vampire face. But, you know, like I say, it's progress. It's progress. Mark, here, I want to know before we get to Sarah, because I feel like Sarah, you know, she's the meat. She's meat of the conversation because she write about us. What? Um, she write about vampire. Yes. Uh, I want to hear more about Seance High Falls. It's about our friends, the ghosts. Mm. Yeah, I'd say it is about your friends, the, the uh, recently and not so recently dead. Um, Seance High Falls is uh, really about the uh, spiritualism movement. It's about the kind of people who hold seances and speak to the dead. And in our series, we have rival seances. On one side, we have the established Lena Fox, who is kind of a con artist, who uh, likes to use her powers to take people for money. And on the other side, we have Oliver Hollow, who is the character I play, and he is kind of a buffoon, but he's got some secrets up his sleeve. Mm. And uh, the two of them together kind of wage a battle and cause all kinds of magical mayhem. That's, oh, oh. I love this, uh, the artwork here. And yeah. um, done by a, a, a Susan Beautiful. Shorter. Beautiful artwork here. And um, mm -hmm. she look at a very nice, calm building. <laughs> um, where not m not much stuff is going on, but we have uh, you know more covers. A tiny, coming. tiny building. Tiny building. I don't know how anyone <laughs> anyone fit in there, but what um, is this building for ants? Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. She's very hobbyist person, like puts <laughs> things together in the glass. It's like in glass bottle, you know. They put the ship together. She does like to hold the world in her hands. You can you'll see mm -hmm. in the series. She's a very mm -hmm. ambitious character. This and is what uh, I like. that ambition is her strength, and it also can be some of her weakness mm. um, if it gets too too ambitious. So, of course, um, she does like to hold the town in her hands. Sometimes Classic humans hubris. they do not they do not know when the spike. Yeah, she gave them like two hundred dollars at the end there. Yes, yeah. two hundred dollars. And that's oh. uh, yeah. And the series is set in eighteen forty five, so two hundred dollars is a lot of money. Indeed, yes. I mean, that's nice. got to be at least like, you know, I don't know, a thousand vials of blood. Oh. You could buy a thousand vials of blood for that in 1845. I'm sure you could. <gasps> oh, wow. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's hard if I frame it in vials me... of blood, then yeah. When you put it that way. Make me very strain, strain my, my self-control here. Um, <laughs> Yes. So, uh, how how is uh, this idea for story? How how has this come about? So, uh, about this time last year, I made a little short with Harlan Guthrie, who's my Ooh. creative partner in this, and the short was about a séance that goes wrong. And um, you can still listen to that on the platform as well. Um, and uh, out of that, we just kind of birthed the idea of uh, um, a series. And the series is about one of the ancestors of the main character in the short. Um, and then also, I've just always really loved that period of time when the sort of spiritualism movement was born in America. And uh, people really, really got into seances. It became the most popular entertainment of the 19th century. Oh, and, really? Um, oh, yeah. It, it, it was everywhere. And uh, it all came out of a joke that two teenage girls played on their mother and um, took off as this huge thing. So I've always been fascinated by that and wanted to write something in that period. I love the period piece. I love, uh, you know, we do the sound effect mm -hmm. for Sound Booth Theater. Uh, but, you know, Harlan, he does it all. He does everything for the show. He does the directing of the actors. Mm -hmm. He does the produce of the sound effects. Uh, he knows exactly how to do because if anyone here knows, recognize Harlan Guthrie name, it's because he did the show Malevolent. Yeah, and he's uh, he's an astounding partner. Like he'll he'll always direct things 
out of the script that I didn't even know were there. Like that's what you want in a creative collaboration. You always just want your partner to bring things to it that you don't bring to it. And he does it all the time. Right. It's as if uh, you communicate to him and uh, you, it's, it's like there's a mental connection. It's not just, it's not just the right on the script, right? You yep. said he fills things in. It's like you, you are, you are transferring image. <laughs> yeah. Through. I mean, a great example is, uh, you know, there's one character played by this, this guy you may have heard of named Jeff Hayes. Mm. Um, I don't know if y'all vampires know him, but... Um, yes, very small nose, strange man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a, there's a in the script, but then Harlan <laughs> gave him a cane, <laughs> and uh, you could hear him use the cane right. throughout the thing. I didn't think of that. It's just a nice little touch that adds to the character. Uh, Jeff, he says, he says same thing. He says, oh, I play this character, you know, Harlan direct me, um, but I did not know I had Ken. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how it came through. And uh, it, it's Harlan. Harlan is a tricky man. He knows how to, uh, how to like you say, he, uh, he just, he, it comes right out of script for him. So uh, very natural, very, very good at uh, creating the experience for spookiness. Yeah, and very layered too. If you if you always want to listen to these on headphones because uh, the layers that he puts into it, just the world is really immersive. Like you really get lost in all the details. It's great. Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, speaking of headphones, speaking of seance, speaking of you and Harlan work together, um, seance was something else before... It was Seance High Falls, which is what we're putting out now. So first episode, before we get we go any further, remember, go to soundbooththeater.com. You can get first episode absolutely free. It's, what, 50 minutes long, right? Yeah, yep. And and we have seven episodes planned after that. And uh, this is going to be a second and, f and last Thursday of every month, a new episode come out. And so you watch us, you, you, you go to newsletter, you subscribe to that, and then you watch for new episodes to come out. But this is all eight episodes already planned. You write them all at first, and then we start work on them. But last year on Halloween, we released this one, mm -hmm. Seance. Uh, and was there a subtitle of that one? No, that one's just called Seance. Um... Seance High Falls is to distinguish it because that's where it takes place in the mytho 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 mythological town of High Falls. Um, but yeah, the other one was just called Seance. Excellent. Yes. And how you come up with idea to do first Seance and uh, what is connection between first one and then mm. this new season of show that you make? Yeah, the first one was, you know, it was just a good idea for Halloween is how it started. Like everyone knows what a seance is yes. and it's great for immersive 3D audio. That was the first project where Harlan and I used three dimensional sound that goes all around your head. Yeah. So, um, but um, then we kind of imagined um, kind of a lineage of these seance mediums. So in the yes. seance last year, we've got this medium He's leading you through a seance. So then we thought, well, what, it, what would his great, great, great grandfather be if this power ran through the family? Oh. So that's where we go back to 1845. There's another story planned for like the 1930s of somebody else in the kind of bloodline with the same power. Like prohibition, all... like yeah, prohibition like right era right seance. Ah. Yeah, right, right there. So um, the idea is we've got this lineage that goes through time. And we look at every each period how the person with that power kind of uses it in that period. I cannot wait to, to hear more about future of of seance. You know what other different town maybe they they visit. Uh, yeah. What they do with the, with the, with it's funny because uh, this very first episode they deal with a certain prohibition in and of mm. itself, oh, but right. it's just yeah. the one town. So yeah. is this? Do you think? Uh, do you think there's uh, something to do here, like um, like alcohol versus the paranormal? Like, do you think? Oh, it's a good question. I hadn't in the 1930s one. I hadn't really thought about the prohibition angle. Uh, I was thinking of it more just during the the Great Depression. But um, that's really interesting because in the in the the Saint Sai Falls, one of the opening 
um, kind of conflicts is the temperance movement, which was really, really big in the early 1900s because everybody in America was wasted. Alcohol was safer to drink than water. So people were just drunk all the time. So yes. the temperance movement was a big, big mm. issue to get miss, people to stop being drunk. I miss these days because you eat human now, you, you suck the blood now. It's, uh, sometimes <laughs> it's the alcohol, sometimes it's not. But when they drink a lot, it's like, uh, like you eat, uh, you know, you eat onion and then you eat pickled onion. Pickled onion, so much better, you know, so <laughs> human. Oh, please. You can get a little buzz much, like when you eat the like, chocolate. Yes. This is why like we so fascinate. Tear spaghetti sauce. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. A little yes, vodka never to... hurt anyone. Exactly. Exactly. Pickle, Come pickle on, liver man. is a delicacy. It's okay. It's okay. You drink as much as you want to. It's fine. You are humans. You, you party, you know. Get on with your life. Okay. So, um... <laughs> Mark, how how did you start doing audio drama in the first place? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, a million years ago, when I was an actor, I made. Oh, a lot I of remember money. those times. A million years. <laughs> yeah, it was like like uh, a, I was like baby at that time. I think you were. I think it was before you were a baby. Honestly, <laughs> probably you were probably just a you know a what? glimmer in your vampire mother's eye. Ooh, that's a long time. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I did used not to, know. Okay. I, I used to do voiceovers for a living, and um, then I got out of it. Um, but then I moved more into writing, and last year I got a grant, theater grant, um, and used part of that to produce an audio drama because I was really interested in it. And that's kind of how I got into it. And then I just started loving the audio medium, loving what you can do with sound effects and sort of inviting the listener to kind of co-create the story because they can't see everything. So give them just enough so they can sort of start filling in the gaps. I think it's great. Encourage their imagination. So I just started really loving the medium, you know? It's interesting how, um, you know, audio drama, it's, it seems like departure from, you know, regular literature, but I don't think so much, you know, it's like uh, mm -hmm. you read a book, the words, they tell you what to see and then your mind, it fill it in for you. Yeah. Right? Sound, mm -hmm pretty much the same right yeah. except it just makes it a little bit more rich you know so like uh, you you just hear audio book and you know sometimes a narrator he know how to really put the picture on your mind but sometimes uh, the the combination of author and the, the narrator it's not enough and then you just mm. sort of zone out but then you have the sound effects and music and do it well, right? Do it right, like Harlan Gassery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you do it right, you put people there. It's yeah. like they are in your castle, you know, and you can tell them where to go. You direct them in the halls and then trap them. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, if, they, if you're a vampire, sure. That's, uh, that's exactly what you do. Trap um, them! <laughs> trap them. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, so, uh, well, I'm so glad that you are here in this industry with us, Mark Harris. I'm so glad to be working on, on the Seance High Falls. Um, uh, very, very fun project. Cannot wait to see how people react to it uh, over the next, uh, let's see, I guess four months. Yeah. It takes one episode every two weeks mm -hmm. for eight episodes. Very excited to see how that goes. So thank you so much. Uh, for talking to us about that now, Henry, are you comfortable, my my man? <laughs> I believe I'm comfortable enough. Good, good yes. Are you drinking? Are you hmm? drinking the alcohol? Uh, I, I've already had a. I've tied a He's, couple on. This is a uh, hot chocolate. You probably could use some more, though, couldn't you? I think you may be. Yeah. You might be able to drink a little you bit more. You would be more. tastier with some vodka. <laughs> Don't scare him. That's not funny. <laughs> there ain't nothing on it's this. It's not green like I'm, I can I'm just get up of. and fly to where he is and eat him. You know. Right. We don't have those kinds of abilities. Movies are so stupid. <laughs> they make you all think <laughs> that we are like those a god are old or something. Vampires. It's so silly. <laughs> yes. uh, only, we have only to take if like. Plane like everybody. Yeah, we have to take. I mean, you know, it's expensive, and if we don't have S enough money, then Spirit we. Fly. But, you know, we don't do that. Plans. Silly. 
<laughs> movies. Movies make everybody stupid, you know? Uh, so. <laughs> Sarah King. I want to know why you want to write about vampire. Um, God, that's a good question. Because I'd written about everything else. <laughs> this was, a, I think it was like my... <sighs> 25th book by that point something like that That's so a mini book yeah <laughs> making a test she's written about space aliens and i did a bit of those that's yeah. right that's i you know that's when you know jeff he tell me uh he tell me you come on the show i'm like oh, who this person and then he was like oh yeah remember this one and this one that i was working on before i was like oh that's like in space Oh, oh, what what does she know space. about vampire if she is in space all the time? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, then he, he showed me this, and he showed me Annie's. Annie Ellicott, she narrated, it sounds amazing. Yeah. And she becomes vampire queen. How do you, yeah. know? How do you know about these things? How do I know about vampires? About the vampire things, yes, how do you know? <laughs> You're not <laughs> obligated to give away your source. <laughs> <laughs> Trade secret. No, we, we, Make need, him pay. we need to find out, Miss King. Uh, so actually, we need the to way find the traitor, Miss King. <laughs> the way it came about is, um, it was kind of a dare. Um, so back when I first started writing it, like I don't know, it was like four years ago. Um, <clears throat> vampire stuff was like really like a big fad and it had been a big fad for like, I don't know, four or five years, something like that. Just like super big fad in the romance. And I hate fads. I hate them with like a burning fiery passion. And <laughs> so I was like, how can I do a vampire story that isn't a vampire story? So, um, uh, and the, the general like idea behind it was um, how can I write a good story that isn't about like some alpha broad chested naked dude on the cover. You know, it's all like, you know, like the, the, yes. the, the crap that everybody, you know, like read. <laughs> we, 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 we never, we, we, we never do that in public. We, look, <laughs> the people, they see us like that. It's when we, you know, we know we're going to eat them already. And, you know, no one would be able to tell this story. Silliness. Silliness, you are so, very much more realistic. Yes. Yeah, sure. It, I, I tried to make something that, okay, if if I was going to find out that I was a vampire and I had no idea beforehand, this is what would happen, kind of, but different. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, vampire that Annie plays, she is uh, very scared of naked. <laughs> I find <laughs> this very interesting because... Not um, Vampire, you know, they are scary when they're naked. That's why, so, no, that's why we don't do that when they, uh, unless we know we're going to eat them. And that's why Twilight is silly because they have sparkly skin and they look like, uh, you know, like, like no normal sparkly. person naked with no. sparkles. So, so actually, there's a reason for that. And um, I'm, I love psychological stuff as like in my writing. Like, I just, I like character stuff period but um yes. psychologically i like phobias and trauma and i like to like go into like what would shape a person based on trauma and so i don't think it's in book one but is it i don't know the it trauma? might be too. well no why she has that phobia you're talking about oh, Mama trauma? I, don't, I don't remember this one i remember trauma samurai man very yeah. PTSD like, yeah. you know, yeah. like, uh, uh, it, it, look, the vampire that is, um, the mother and father as main character, you know, they kind of, uh, okay. they, play, they play with their food, you know, yeah, it's they, not, yes, uh, yeah, and they like professor like, yeah. you know, it's not what so, professors do. I also was thinking, okay, so if there is like a let's just hypothesize that there's an immortal subculture out there that yes. has been forever yeah and they have shit tons of money because yes, you know you don't hypothesize. My, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry someone said money <laughs> yeah. so let, 
you know, you can pretty much assume that anybody that's been around since like, you know, the, the 1200s or whatever, they, they've got cash somehow. They've probably, you know, if you don't die, you don't lose it generally. And if you're dead, <laughs> you do not spend. So you have lots, lots so, and lots. The idea was like, if there's this whole immortal subculture going on, like what kind of horrible things would they be doing to people? And so there's a lot of like ex exploration. It's, it's one of the darker books that I've ever written mm. because I tried to make it as realistic as possible. Like mm. if there's people that literally eat other people, they have mm -hmm. to be realistic. And um, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell I you, um, I just mm. bought your book just hearing you talk about it. Oh, did you? Aww. Yeah, I just went on and bought. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I gotta hear this. So oh, I just went on, I just bought it. Thank you so much. Thank oh. you so much. <laughs> Can I ask you now? Uh, but first, America's favorite Canadian winner, Justin Thomas James. Yay! Hello, Justin. Hello. All right. I'm a, he Doug. I'm a wiener. He, he, uh, he, he, he distributes frozen peas all across Canada. A uh, very, uh, very strong man. Very, very Thank hot you, dog like yes. today. But not usually like hot dog. To be oh, no. to be fair. No. It, what it, is that? It, it it sounds like it sounds like you have uh, you have audio technical difficult right now. Oh uh, no. There's uh, there's uh -oh. well, the last set of question bills. is skip and okay. maybe maybe you come back. You you, you got you got, got like some back back issues. Like some try some peas back. Try forty one instead forty four one instead of forty eight. <laughs> Hey, okay, he will be back. Sarah we, is we love Alaskan Furry about werewolves in Alaska. Yes, Ala oh, there must be many furries in Alaska, right? Because it's so cold. <laughs> they they just they are just fine out there because they wear the big furry costume, and um, this entire right? world, like all the all the Alaska paranormal books, they're they're written in the same world, and yeah. they're all about. <laughs> like not myth busting but um like just being real versus uh all the the crap that's out there i wanted to write something that was more realistic than just like i don't know the alpha werewolf crap that you see everywhere that makes billions and billions of dollars but you know it's <laughs> this one this particular one alaskan fury is actually um my favorite book aside from maybe one or two other ones out of i think i'm up to like 31 books now so it's very entertained it was gr did you read it i uh, i've i've read some uh jeff hayes he do the um he do the uh, donkey with horn voice. <laughs> um, yeah. hey. unicorn. Oh, yes yes yeah yes oh, yes unicorn, unicorn yes he do a yeah. unicorn voice. Oh, he do um, what else? He do uh, he, he do uh, the Thunderbird. Yes, the uh, gymnast. The gymnast. <laughs> He's a dancer. God, yes, the dance. dance he has dance instruct, and then he is um, he a hot dancer. He, I think so because he has ladies. <laughs> he has many ladies. Yes, he does. Oh. <laughs> he reminds me of myself to be. To that's, be fair, you know. That's the joke. Like, you do have the vibes of a playboy. <clears throat> Yeah, if if you wanna if you wanna like go to to college and like find lots of women, go to go to dance. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Team player. But no, Alaska. okay. So Alaska, Alaskan Fury is like one of my favorites of all time that I've written, and it's just a really powerful love story. And um, I figured, how how do you make the best love story possible? And the characters have to start out hating each other, like truly, <sighs> truly hating each other, right? Mm -hmm. and... Just like me and Captain Doolong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, one thing I like about this cover is uh, the eyeballs. He looks through the hole. He looks through the hole. It reminds me of a painting oh, they... I have in my house. Um, I can look through the hole to see if uh, anyone's stealing from me. Through. You know. They, well, why, well, you know why you would have hole in your paintings, so you can watch, make sure no one steals your things. So, this I is about silverware. Excellent. A genie and um, a fury, which is basically the same creature mythologically as like an angel or um, God. There's a, there's like 
five or six different creatures in all sorts of different mythologies that have the same exact abilities and they're all like avian so i just combined them all into one <laughs> oh. and so it was a lot a of fun chimera of sorts no 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 just, why not just one bird why not one bird god is, is, yes is, they is say the uh how they say i know this one they say uh get two birds stoned at once right yeah totally yes, yes. <laughs> that's totally the saying that's the that's the one Ah, mm. I am so, so hip with the with the uh, uh, human culture nowadays. Twenty seventh century, you know. Did Alaskan Fury go up already? Is it out? Uh, no, it's it's the cold read still available, uh, but I think I think that polish is still happen. Um, mm. It should not be too long though. Uh, first book, Alaskan Fire. I believe yeah. is the name of it. It's it is on Audible right now. If you want to go check mm -hmm. that out, um, but also also this Vampire Queen. It's part of. It's like spin-off, right? It's like uh, it's, this is like Fraser, and there, then there. Alaskan Fire is like Cheers. Is that correct? <laughs> so okay, so they all take place in the same world in Alaska, paranormal, right. but they all have separate like they're all standalones basically, aside from. <sighs> Um, the the vampire one it's a series so it's you have to like read the whole series of vampire ones but Alaskan Fire and Alaskan Fury are completely standalones and um, the vampire one as a whole is a standalone from the other two so okay okay that's interesting you know I like I like when um, many stories they tell you you tell the story the story is done. You tell another story, that story is done. But if you want to, you can fill it in between. You tell people, oh, hey, remember this character from first story? <laughs> he does other things. And he happens to do them in second <laughs> story. What? Are you dropping hint? You want that samurai somewhere else? What? He, he does show up somewhere, does he, does he not? Oh, he, he's all throughout the the... Um, vampire ones, but I didn't put them yes. together. But 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 not every character, right? Not every character. I'm just saying, like Alaskan Fire, Alaskan Fury, the uh, gymnast bird. He's been both. <laughs> he's in both of them, right? Yeah, dancer. he's a, he's a dancer bird. Yes, yeah. yes. So specializes Henry. in ballet. Henry Kramer, <laughs> tell me about. Sarah's space story. How, how do? You, how does she know so much about space? Whoa. Well, being a space pirate myself, mm -hmm. I can tell you firsthand that Sarah has served aboard many of the sloops and ships I myself have been. I may or may not have influenced a few of the uh, <clears throat> Golden Lion uh, yeah. operatives in one of the Very stories. Good. Not, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> This is why we hire you. You have the connections. You get us, uh, you know, work on all sorts of pirate ships out in space. Uh, so what's what Sarah does on these on these pirate ships in space? She is uh, <laughs> she's crewman. She does. She, oh, she, she, she she's uh, she's a engineer. She's, she's uh, in charge of men in the powder and the laser patches. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's the one to blow Hold holes them. in the enemy ships firsthand. <laughs> we, we have a nickname for her. Uh, King's crown because once she's sat atop the throne, everybody got to bow down. Oh, <laughs> no wonder she knows so much about the space. So, what make, what do you think, makes Sarah King's space stories special? You narrate how many? Two? Uh, I've narrated a couple so Three? far, and I can't wait to do the rest. I would say. What makes them truly special is that they don't have your typical morality or yes. location. Yes. Each of the stories comes from a completely different perspective with its own rich culture distilled down into so many words as to get to the core essence of an entire novel within the span of about 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> she does not like what Sarah. You but, are wait, first of all, Justin, are you okay over there? I'm a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs>
that makes me feel bad for you. Like, or you, do you feel like maybe someone should eat you? He's hot dog. <laughs> uh, I feel I'm, like I'm just a hot them. dog. Come on, you gotta You're catch up, man. You're cross-eyed there. It looks like hot dog is being pleased I'm a as hot being dog. you. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe being hot dog is not so bad from hot dog perspective. Okay, I'm a hot Sarah, dog. You argue you argue with uh, Harry Kramer, the Henry Kramer. I'm sorry. Um, you argue with him. You tell him why he's wrong. It's, uh, it seemed like you did not like his explanation of what. Oh yeah, I'm the I'm the captain of those ships. He's oh. he's just like, clearly wrong. Oh, it, <laughs> you just you just want the, you just want to put him in place. That, yeah. Yes, okay, so, <laughs> so, so yeah. tales from the battered mind. We have, uh, and this, these ones, these are, are these in space? Uh, one of them is fairy. The other one is fantasy right. based. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and and this is available for free on the platform. What? We have lots of tales from the battered <laughs> mind on the is platform for free. These are Sarah King writings. This one has Henry Kramer on it. This and he does one more. It's a uh, the golden one more. The golden direct directive. You beat me to it. And I, b I believe there's another one. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. It. It's the throne of the first that, god of fire. The first god of fire. That's a zero story, by the way. Hmm. What's this? That's a zero story. Yes. 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 You mean it's in zero. Europe? No. no. Oh, zero. This man, this man, oh, very, very, uh, very good hero. His name is Zero. It's funny. His name is Zero. With he's what a he good does. hero. Yes. And here's his picture, but not him. It's actually a snake. <laughs> <laughs> it's not snake. I believe I played a, a great, it's great ancestor to the hero. Uh, yes. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, um, um, mm, uh, what they call dasha. Dasha. Uh, I, yeah. I like the dasha. They're very strong, very strong creature. I got a much bigger picture. And I like. Oh my goodness! And it looks like bug eyeballs, and uh, it has a very charming I accent. They spoke like this. Yes. Oh, it's very, very sneaky guy. Creepy, mm. crazy things, and zero. Is this first book forging zero? This is like gauntlet. This is like you are you are forging yourself by reading through the book and bearing the problems that main character zero goes through. So I actually wrote that book like right after my um, then fiance slash soon to be husband went through the boot camp. So. I got like the the rundown of how bad Marine Boot Camp was, Oof. and yeah, I I got like oh. I got all the stories, and I'm like, yeah, let me just put that into a book. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you are like, ah, that's nothing. Look what Zero can go through. <laughs> so that book, oh. that's my that's another one of my favorites. I've got three favorites. It's Outer Bounds, Zero Recall, and Alaskan Fury. But Zero Recall, um, this is the one where my brother, like, woke me up one morning about, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And he walked into my bedroom <clears throat> while I was still sleeping. He had a Pepsi in his hand. He's got this, like, weird, like, thoughtful look on his face and cracks the pep Pepsi as I'm, like, sitting up, like, what are you doing in my room? And he's like, Sarah, you're going to write a book. And it's going to go like this. And then he he, he does a glamour on you. He yeah, does, yeah. The glamour. Wait, he just he says, started. These are not the droids. You are yeah. going to write a book. Yeah, and he just started laying it out layer by yeah. layer by layer for two hours. He monologued, and about like five minutes into that monologue, I realized what was happening. I was like, "Oh my god!" And I jumped up. And like, I don't know how dressed I was, but I got my. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got my notebook <laughs> and Stop I just, write it down. I just started writing that shit down as fast as I could. Was he two... possessed by spirits? Huh? Was he possessed by spirits or el <laughs> elsewise compelled? It sounds like witchcraft to me. He should be burned at the stake. 
he's just brilliant. Um, he's Macronomicon on um, Railroad, oh, and I think right? is about to do one for like. <laughs> do you Mac say again? Say one Mac more time. Macronomicon. What about him? Aren't you guys gonna do a book? Yes. Yes. We are, we are work with Macronomicon with uh, Is Steve that the macaroni game lit? Is that the, the pasta macaroni? game lit? I think so. I think there's pasta. I think there's pasta and there's uh, machines. They make pasta with the machines with macro. I don't I don't remember. Oh. But Steve Campbell, he will tell you. He will tell you all what it's about. It's oh. on Royal Road at the moment. I, don't I know thought we were going to get like a, a clip of Steve telling us about what the book is going to be. I was like, wow, we have that prepared? <laughs> we have something prepared? Steve Campbell, it, you know, the paperwork for this was extensive and all. Oh, yes. Steve He's Sorry, Canadian, yeah. so he says pasta. It's very strange. Pasta. It was amazing. Yeah, yes. Uh, but uh, yes, we will be working with the Macronomicon very mm. soon. Uh, mm. he, is, he has convinced us. He did a glamour to us. <laughs> He's like, oh, you will do my audio book. And I just <laughs> fell for it, you know. It's I kind of a, you know, I'm kind of a sucker <laughs> for those kinds of. Ah, 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 ah. You're bad crazy. I make the funny, uh, the funny uh, sayings. Ah, uh, uh, So, uh, uh. um, so excited about uh. Sarah King. Bring so many things to our platform. We bring so many audio books for her. Uh, it's it's because uh, you know the the crew. They tell me. She is, she's, she's make the best writing, you know, she makes, she makes things, you know, like easy to read, easy to act the things out. It's so, it's so, it just glides right out of, of narration, you know, uh, Henry is, is, uh, yeah, he is agreeing with me. And Justin, That's have you done the narration for some tales uh, from the Fat I've Line? done, I've done some voices. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. <clears throat> let's see if I can get the voice. <clears throat> Um, you're, you're wait, did he? Did he? He didn't have the accent in the end, right? He, he just sounded more like the beast. Oh, the bargest. The bargest. Yeah, that's, 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 that's like that's coming up. So, like, that's Vampire Queen two, and oh right. my, God, so much fun. He's he's one of my favorite characters of all time. He's got he's like wait. he's straight man, but he's. Yeah. And funny he has no idea he's being funny right. and every him is like absolutely fucking terrified yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. just, he's got ptsd oh, and he doesn't yeah. <laughs> it's great nah. i love it <laughs> well, that's good to know i'm gonna Monster. take some notes right now yeah take notes that. Make, be, make sure to traumatize yourself before you um <laughs> Do that be, before you do that role. It's That's, to be yeah, Hear me acting. yourself notes. Get trauma, then to, get therapy, then get more I, I'm trauma. I'm going to need the specifics on that trauma there, Sarah. Uh, just go visit Vietnam War, you know? That's where everyone get their PTSD. Uh, um, <laughs> do okay. in woods. So, uh, but result, result of your brother, he come in with uh, prophecy, he tell you um, this is how books should go, he glamour you, no droids here. Uh, you are writing a book, and zero recall is what come out from that. Is that right? And it was easily one of the best books I've ever written. Um, and it, I love it, that book. It was very, very difficult to write. It was so the way it's written, you can read it three times, and it's a different book each time. He told me that when he was setting this up, and I was like. Oh my God, that's fucking brilliant. But you have to not know what's going to happen going into the first. So like Jeff knew everything going in, so he couldn't really like get the full experience, but like a oh. brand. Yeah. Like a brand new listener, like they can read it once and it gets to the ending. And it's like, Holy shit. Right. And then they start it over and they, they catch all the stuff that they missed the first time. And then they get to the end, and it's like, holy shit! And then they can start over, and it's another book. Three times. Hmm. And I have one guy, he read it 19 times now, and he says he still gets stuff from it. And I've had a doctor read it six times, and said that 
they got something new from it every time. And <laughs> the general generally people go for three though. <laughs> That's many mm. readings. No, is this so many. Is this something that you planned when you wrote when you when you Absolutely. set out to write it and we're going through it like you were how do you how do you go about layering it like that and and creating that experience for the readers well if i tell you then okay oh, the, hot there's dog. a reason she be called captain king <laughs> you figure out how to say it without giving away spoilers okay so if you get into the point of view of one of the characters that you want the person to think is something you, you can use like the the reader's own intellect against them and their own arrogance against them. So if you have a really smart reader, you can make them believe that you're a bad writer by putting hints into the story that sound like bad writing. I know. Hmm. And then they'll hmm. skim over it. Never over. lost a battle, Captain mm. King. Never lost a battle. And then, uh, so they'll skim over it, and they'll be like, and, and that's like the worst thing. Don't ever skim my books. You'll miss a shit ton. But they'll skim it, and then they'll they'll like, oh my god, it was right there the whole freaking time. Like, and and so I don't, I don't do the boring narration stuff. So the the big paragraphs almost off. They almost always have something in them that you need to read, and so. I have a lot of really smart fans and they've kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, you don't skim my books because they'll miss shit. <laughs> and if it forces yeah. them to slow down and I think they appreciate that. Yes, I have to have patience. I have to have patience to read from, from you and to listen to an audio book made, made from you. So Wait, yeah, I want to back up. Which one are you talking about now? Because I need to put it in my cart. <laughs> Zero Recall? Zero that Recall. Is... That is book two of a, of a large series. But okay, so if you want to, you get the background from book one. But Sarah, but, she likes to tell people, don't do that one. It takes a long time and it's hard to read. Uh, book two, you can read on your own if you want to. It's, it's much more fun. But book one is full of drama. Okay. Full of, full of uh, uh, trial and tribulation of main character. And uh, <laughs> if you you can miss out on things if you if you skip it, but book two is like uh, it's a maze. It's a maze. <laughs> you you list, listen to that. It's just fine. Yeah, the, the, the snake a... man, the snake man, very entertain, very like him. So, uh, fourteen zero is the first one in the series. They're all standalones. Every single book that I write, I try to make it a standalone. But everything in zero is definitely a standalone, aside from books three and four they're gonna they're it was too big and i i cut them in half but um because they ended up being about five hundred thousand words hmm. but yeah <laughs> so um everything's a standalone but there's a prophecy in book one that's basically the most important part and so it i i just don't like book one because it's so dark and it's it's pretty it's depressing it's depressing, and I don't like depressing stuff. Sounds um, like my kind of book. Me too. <laughs> um, and it was like one of the earlier books that I've ever written, so it, I don't know, it just, it, I didn't like it as much as Zero Recall. It's like, it's it's on like the low end of, like, I'd, I'd rate it as like, like a three or a four out of, you know, all 30, whereas Zero Recall is like one of the top three. Hmm. So... Yeah. Zero Recall, like, very fun adventure, romp, lots of war, lots of interesting character, entire entire team of space soldier. They, uh, everyone, completely different species. This is thing yeah. that does not happen very much in the universe that she make because the different species are so different. They have culture clash, you know, culture they clash, and them. then they, they, they hurt each other. They can't follow the order or whatever, but then... Zero come along, and he is, he is used to, you know, he does not big follow human order. Guy. He big human guy. And, he, you know, he's like, hey, everybody, 
I think we can work together. You are stupid. Let's uh, let's do things the right way, and okay. and it it eventually work. You know, it eventually work, and it's it's very good because the the different character they blend, they they bounce off each other very, very much, and it's like it's like harmony. You know, it's like um, uh, from mm. zero to. Uh, So, <laughs> I don't know what bl I don't know what mix with blood. I never mix blood with anything, but you know, I try to think. Uh, Have alcohol. you ever tried? It's like draw. blood and alcohol. Yes, yes, like pickled like blood. blood. And alcohol. Yes, uh, we call it a Bloody Mary <laughs> or a Caesar if you're in Canada. Yes, Caesar. Oh, um, you get stabbed. You get stabbed. That's that's why. Zero is actually not very smart, and. Uh, some people have commented on like they they don't like that, but I'm like, um, okay, you're in a you're in a, a galactic federation where you are not going to be the smartest species out there, and so he's got two teammates that are like way smarter than him, and he he has to cope with that, which is pretty interesting because he's in charge, but they're like they don't like that. He, he has the he has the intuition, he has the grit, he has the the willpower to to make um, to to get through the difficult uh, without you know he put himself second because he is loyal to Congress, yeah. right? He loves he loves the Congress um, because they they uh, what they call uh, the Stockholm syndrome him, you know. <laughs> That's exactly what they do to him. That's yes. Exactly the first yes. one put your so, finger on perfect i love it yes yes so they they do that to him and he makes perfect soldier and he makes everybody work together it's very it's very mm. entertaining they Highly recommend they brainwash him that's Indeed. like that's to in forging zero is he get he gets brainwashed yes yes very good i love the brainwash very effective <laughs> technique you know, makes easy. They just they come to you instead of you run around, chase them. You know, um, yeah. Mm. You just brainwash them. They just come to you. It's easy. John, 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 Justin. What is yes. everything from hot dog point of view? That's what everyone I think want to know. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just a hot dog. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It seems that um, way to me. I don't know. I, uh, I, I would think you would relish this opportunity. Oh, boy. Mm, he makes the funny. <laughs> uh -huh. just, yeah. try to, really? just try to catch up with the rest of us. Oh, oh they're all coming at you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Distributing Peas. Uh, hey, hey. Let, let, let's, give him a let's, let's give him a chance. We don't want to toast his buns now. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. That's all the ingredients uh, I, coming in I, hot. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand. I'm just a hot dog. <laughs> oh, everyone here is so funny. It's like, do you guys, hey, are you from TV show? Are you from Hollywood, all of you people? That's what it feels like. Like we are in Hollywood you're, Square. You're punk. Which Hollywood one of you, Square. Whoopi Goldberg? Yes. Well, I'm the only one dressed like I should be on Hollywood Squares and like the yeah, Paul you... Lind role. I, I can see I can see Whoopi Goldberg wear that. Yes, <laughs> I like your funky yeah. shirt. Oh, it's okay. got squares on it. It is My a squares, Hollywood. Huh? You are a Hollywood Squares. Yep. Yes. Yes. So this is like Hollywood Squares. What, what do they? What do they even like, do on I that don't show? Have a buzzer, though. They answer they, questions. They, have they get drunk mostly. They get buzzers. Mm. And they this have is, Gilbert this Gottfried. Is Hollywood oh, he gone now. Oh. I miss the Gilbert Gottfried. Oh uh, yeah. He was the only reason yeah. to watch Hollywood Square. <laughs> now it's gone. No more. Rub your eye again, Jeff. <laughs> no I was particularly Square. taken by his rendition of Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. A, oh my god. It's a classic. It's a classic. It uh no one brings soul to that work of art like the Gilbert Gottfried. Uh I wasn't aware it had. What's it's this about shame. your shoes? Oh, oh, that's, do you, that's do you what like I want to wear know. Different color shoes. Are, are that's really what I want to know. 
Oh shit. Oh fuck, they are. Here. The, the shots were. Oh, oh, she's got two different hey. I think I think I knew that you were wearing clogs. I don't know I, how. Yes. I, how did I, I know this? Harley Quinn clogs. How did I know you were wearing clogs? Crocs. I kind of throw up in my mouth a li little bit at that. Yeah. The Crocs. Oh. Six of one, so half gross. dozen of another. Yes. Great. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, so uh, you have candy on your feet. Very Halloween. Um, and uh, yeah, what is everyone else's Halloween plans? We're almost done with the show. We got five minutes. I think it's okay, going to I, be enough. One of my plans is to play this video. I have uh -oh. to forget. We're forgetting cinematic audio again. Oh, oh we play. Yes, I love this commercial. We at Sound Booth Theater are saying goodbye today. We're saying goodbye to deep dives. Shh. No, no, don't panic. Okay. We're still making premium audio stories with the full cast, sound effects, and music. We're just not calling them deep dives anymore. Because to be honest, th that sh was confusing. With the brand <laughs> new app coming out, we figured we'd make the switch now to something we won't have to explain every time. Introducing classic audiobooks and cinematic audio. <laughs> That's easy enough, right? You get it? You can get audiobooks that are just like what everyone's used to, or you can get the ones with our special sauce. Special sauce. Right in your ears. Mm. Cinematic audio. Not deep dives. Cinematic audio. On the new Sound Booth Theater app. Yes. I had to clean out some of that special sauce in my ears. This is correct. Yes, special sauce no, leave, in the ears. Leave it in. Leave it in. Yes. Oh, yeah. Have you leave it in? Uh, just stay 45 <laughs> minutes. You like sit. My favorite you know, part. It's not to tickle. That's when you know it's working. My favorite right. part is the. Yes. Well, uh, you know, he, he needs to calm people down. We don't want to lose the sound effects and music and full it's cast, true. you know. But, it's uh, true. you know. Everyone, everyone panic when you say that. Yes. Uh, down, you know, it's like it's like a lady. You know, she she think I'm going to eat her. She, 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 no, it's, I'm not going to eat you. Of course, I'm going to eat her. But you know, if if, if I thought you drained panic, people, then not her eat them. That's more cannibal, you know? isn't it? What? Second. I thought you drained people. You don't eat them. That's more cannibal or something, I, I, isn't it? Yeah, it's vernacular with with vampire. You know, you hang out with us, feast for a on while. them, feast on yeah. them. We eat sometimes. Them. We say that you know. We of course we don't eat the meat. You know, we throw it away. It's like banana husk. Yeah, you know, you uh, it's bones? not needed. Um, I don't eat bones, but you know, I don't do that either. <laughs> you know, no. I, sometimes, sometimes you can get uh, like you you. you you got to work on it a little bit. You, you you just you know on the on the bone. You get a hole in um, it. You get some marrow. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I have a question. Mm. Do vampires eat hot dogs? Ooh, no. There's no blood left. Only if it is still alive. No, hot dogs are our our, 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 our our hot dogs are our friends. I, oh, I, I think I don't eat our us. friends either. Finally, oh, does, he means a someone who doesn't want to eat me. We use you as bait. We want we want oh, human yeah. to come to us. We yeah. make mountain Big of hot dogs human. right With in front of door. And then, you know, people see it. They're like, what? Who would make mountain of hot dog? And then they come huh. and they eat one. I think it's she's delicious. trying to break the What they don't know. What they Absolutely. Don't know. Sandwich. We, we put brainwashed chemicals Absolute. in our hot dog. Absolutely. That's I agree. It's bread and meat. It's a sandwich. I don't yeah. know what is the definition of sandwich. I'm not a sandwich. I'm not a sandwich. Sandwich. I'm the expert you... here. <laughs> I'm a hot dog. I mean, sandwich. I'm, and I think you are. I'm wait, a hot wait, dog. wait, 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 wait. Is a is a, is a hot dog a sandwich or is it a taco? 
Oh, oh. Where, mm, I, hmm. okay, let's I'm let's a hot dog. I'm not a fucking taco. I'm we're, not a fucking why are we chicken hey, 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 easy on that muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you yeah. don't recognize the hot dog. He gets greasy. He, he, hey, look, it looks like no. it looks like we're in a bit of a pickle. So just ease up on that mustard oh, gas. Oh, 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 I guess he is a sandwich. <laughs> if the bread gets separated, <laughs> then he is a sandwich. But if the bread stays connected yeah. i don't know about that i you have, have said literally two things today <laughs> one of them was expletives the other one do you remember what it was is the first you thing are, i said you are not a sandwich that you are hot dog i said i am a hot dog it's the first thing i ever said to you okay. leave him alone Oh dear look, God! Look, he just got back from Vietnam. This hot dog. <laughs> you don't want. Oh he got the PSD. You there. don't want him uh, get crazy with uh, uh, the hot dog I, debate. I, I hate you know? to be to burst someone's him. bubble, but apparently now I'm reading that a pop tart is a calzone. Oh, oh, that is mind blowing. My cousin. Uh, oh, <laughs> but it, it, they're right. You are correct. It is. It is dessert calzone. Uh, I've, I never eat pop tart again. I don't know how, how I'm going to feel about disaster, this. Disaster, disaster discovery. I'm going oh, to go make a hot dog water martini. Why you ruin pop tarts for us? Ah, that's a good Halloween plan. A hot dog martini. Eyes? What does that even? He's talking about me, obviously. The hot dog, the hot dog juice. In place of remove, uh, or are you actually place... dipping the hot dog in the market? Has anyone very clever? Lie to both has, of those has... things. I need to up my protein. That's very clever. Has has anyone here seen every everything everywhere all at once? Not yet. Oh, yeah. I want to see I have this. Seen it. Oh, you that was a hot dog hands. It. That was yeah, a big moment for us, for my kind. <laughs> that was a big moment. You are finally seen. Uh -huh. Yes, represented you finally, fairly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It now, was amazing. Now, other hot dogs can see themselves in her hands, in her fingers. Yeah. They can I, be like, I got oh, a callback for a, that part. I can be, a, a, <laughs> I can be a, a, a digit that can manipulate things, too. Oh, I think Scrod uh, Scar was Nightshade, I would imagine that a blood pop-tart is basically just a human being, because we're basically giant walking Capri Sun that, pouches. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, Capri blood. Sun, that's good. That's good analogy. Just, Pop, we yeah, open like a Capri and then you Sun. Just, <laughs> Comes right out, super Just easy. Straw. You're like fountains. You're like, I poke you and you make. Okay, Halloween. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming and partying with us vampires. You know, some people think we are old fuzzy daddies, but uh, really, we like to have fun. We like to talk to people. Um, but remember. Uh, follow what the commercial we just were on. It says 15% off everything on Sandu Theater Store, including. Chronicle, uh, I'm sorry, Vampire Queen Book 1, The <laughs> Samurai by Sarah King, that is 15% off. And then we have Mark Harris's Seance, High Falls, 